Hey guys, Scott here. In this video, I want to show you how to set up and configure the basic Joomla settings. So the first thing you need to do is log into Joomla or the administration side of Joomla. So once you've logged in, the control panel should load. And from here, you can click global configuration or come up to site and global configuration. Now I'm just going to briefly step through the more important settings and I'm going to skip over the ones you don't really need to know. So to start off with, you've got site settings and this will be under the first settings here, which is just site and that'll be highlighted to let you know that it's the active page. And you'll see there's also system and server. So we're going to start with site first. So under this section here, that's called site settings. You'll see the first option is site offline. This will give you the ability to put your site into basically a maintenance state where if people access your site, it's going to tell them that site's currently down for maintenance or it actually uses this offline message here. So it says here, this site is down for maintenance. Please check back again soon. So that'll come up instead of loading any page in your site. If you tick this to site offline to yes. Now I rarely use this. I usually update my site while it's still live, but you can put your site down if you have a lot to change or you want to add in a lot of stuff or for any reason you can set that to yes. And then you can bring your site back up by clicking it back to no and applying the settings. The site name here, this is what you can use to change the default setting here, which is just mysite.com to your actual site name. So I'd enter this and you can enter whatever you want. So you put in your actual site name there. The default editor, this is this stands for what you see is what you get, and that's just a type of editor. So basically the default content editor for your website is this here. You can change that if you want, but to begin with, Joomla only comes with one editor, which is this tiny MCE. If you've installed a new editor through extensions, you can change that here to be the default editor. Now for these list lengths, feed lengths and feed email, usually you don't really need to worry about those and I'll just leave them all. I usually leave those and I touch them. So we can skip those settings. Now the metadata settings, these are the global site meta settings or metadata settings. So basically if you don't set up a description or keywords when you're entering in other articles, it'll use the default one, which is what's here. So basically put in a global site description here. So what your site is about, and then also put in keywords that pretty much relate to what the overall theme of your website is. So that's what you do for those two. And for this is to show title meta tag and show author meta tag. I always leave these both to yes, but you can turn those off if you want so that it doesn't show title meta tag in the like coding of your site. It's best to leave that to yes. So usually just leave that to yes. Now the SEO settings, I've actually got a, tu a tutorial to show you how to set those up because you've got to change a file on your website hosting account before you can use them. For the tutorial to show you how to set those up, you can find that on my side on the left here under make Joomla SEF, so search engine friendly. I'm going to ignore that for now because I've got the tutorial on those. So that's all the settings you need to worry about for this one. And now let's click system here and have a look at the system settings. This first section, you can pretty much ignore. You won't need to change anything there. And if you ever install another application to work with Joomla and it asks for asks you what your Joomla secret word is, that's just this here. 99% of you won't, will never have to use that, but if you ever do get asked what your secret word for Joomla is, that's where you find it under the system settings. Now for the user settings here, you can allow user registration. So if you want people to be able to sign up for your website and register, you can have this tick to yes, or you can set, set it to no so that you don't have registrations enabled. If you do have registrations enabled, you can change what the default new user is registered to. Pretty much always keep this to registered, never set it to author or editor, because that gives them other privileges and they can add stuff to your site and that which you don't want, unless that is what you do want, but usually just leave that. Now this here is to set it so that if someone signs up to your website, 
they get sent an email where they have to activate. So basically they have to use the correct email. And if they don't click the link in the email or the activation email, their account doesn't get set to active. So usually leave that to yes so that people that sign up have to use the correct email account and they can't sign up using a random one or a fake email. But you can disable that if you want. You can set it to show the front end user parameters. This will give, if your theme allows it, this will give the logged in users the ability to change the language, change which editor is for their account and stuff. And basically just leave that to show. You can hide it if you want, but there's not much point. Now the media settings can pretty much be ignored. Basically the only things you need to worry about here are the minimum user level for Media Manager. So if you allow people to sign up to your website and you want to give them access to a Media Manager to be able to upload files, you have to change this to the lowest level or minimum level of registration needed to access the Media Manager. Usually leave that at least on author so that not everyone can use it. And you can also restrict uploads here if you want. So you can click that to restrict the uploads. I don't usually allow people to upload anything. So I've usually got this turned off or set, set the minimum level to a higher one. And now debug settings you can ignore. You can ignore the cache or cache settings, however you want to say it. And now the session settings, you can see at the moment it's set to 15 minutes which means that if someone is on your site and logged in, including you on the administration side, if you're inactive for more than 15 minutes, you'll be logged out. You can change this to whatever time you want. Don't set it too high though, because you want it so that if someone walks away from their computer, that it logs them out so that people that like walk past or anything can't use their account. I usually set this to about half an hour, but you can set it to whatever you want. So that covers all the system settings. And now let's have a look at the server settings. In the server settings, there's not much you actually need to change. The only real things you have to worry about here are the local settings. This is where you can change the time zone used. So you can change what time your website runs on. Usually set this to like your location. So you can change that to whatever you want. And now the FTP settings. You can actually use your whole Joomla website with never having to worry about setting up the FTP settings. But I like to set up the settings because it's useful for some extensions and also for the template manager. Because if you've played around with changing settings for your template, you've probably noticed that certain templates like Rocket Themes and stuff, they have a lot of settings you can change and you usually change them quite a bit. If you have no FTP account set up for Joomla to use, whenever a settings changed, the actual configuration file on your web server for the template manager is put into a locked state so no one else can edit it. And then every time you want to change another setting, you have to log into your website hosting account and change permissions of that file so that you can edit it again. And then every time you edit it again, it's changed again. Basically what happens is if you give Joomla FTP settings, every time you change template settings, it'll automatically change the permissions of that file so that it can edit it and then it changes it back. The reason it changes it to be untouchable is so that no one, no random people can edit your settings, which it's, it's a security thing basically. So it is handy to have the FTP settings set up and actually have this enabled. So there's that option. The database settings pretty much ignore and the mail settings pretty much ignore. You won't need to worry about any of those. So that's pretty much all the global settings you need to worry about. There's only a few things you really seriously need to edit. When you install extensions, they'll always have like their own settings you can change and these global settings will never really change. So there's just a few things you need to set up like the site name, time zone, FTP account, um, user registration, just things like that of what you need to worry about for the global configuration. So that's all for this video. I hope it helped. Thanks.